Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rama. Welcome back to another episode of the South Carolina Gamecocks Dynasty here on EA Sports College Football 25 as you get into week two of the 2026 season. South Carolina back at home after last week's 20-13 win against the Florida Atlantic Owls. Wasn't the prettiest win, but it was a dub nonetheless. However, it's going to be a lot tougher this week as this week we play host to the Miami Hurricanes playing their first game of the season. A home and home the next two years against the U. So we'll start off with them at home this season. If you're excited for this one, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more Dynasty mode content as it will be the Gamecocks starting off with the football as this offense will take the field. Wasn't the prettiest. They got going in the fourth quarter, particularly that man right there, Nick Harbour. But we'll need more than just him to beat the Hurricanes. So we'll start off on the ground first with McReynolds. who had a big game last week. And he starts off with a loss of one. Armando Blunt with the TFL. Second and 11. McReynolds again this time gets eight. So it makes it a manageable third and three. You can see 107 yards on the ground for him last week. First time to the air goes Reno. And he's going to be sacked. Nobody open. Brought down for the sack. And that'll... Force the punt on a three and out. We'll take a look at the Miami offense. Josiah Trader, one of the guys to look out for. This U team has plenty of weapons. And they're led by true sophomore quarterback Jose Jasmine. Who on the first play of the game, we'll dump this one off short for a first down. However, looks like it's going to be coming backwards as there's going to be a holding call against the offensive line, specifically right guard Terrence Jamerson. So first and 19, now they go to the ground. Here's Mark Fletcher, the senior halfback, who had eight touchdowns a year ago. He gets one. Second and 18, Miami sets up a mid-screen, and it works to perfection for Isaiah Horton, who gets out and picks up 13. Makes it a much more manageable third and five. Tight end across formation, handoff Fletcher, and he's going to be stopped two yards shy. Miami keeps the offense on the field. Aggressive early, fourth and two. Jasmine to throw right side, and it's going to be caught for a first down. Miami's gamble pays off. So now first and 10, motion out the halfback. Jasmine will step up. He'll tuck in himself, and he's a good runner. Former five-star recruit two years ago out of North Palm Beach, Florida. Had a good freshman campaign, but right now it's going to be a false start. Actually, a neutral zone infraction. They're going to get Jendrick Wills, or Nate Lamb, excuse me, with the five-yard penalty. So now second and two, handoff Fletcher. Easy hole up the middle, and there we go. Hurricanes into red zone territory, down to the 14. They hand it off again. Fletcher, right side. He picks up five before spun down. Big second and five now. Two tight ends. They hand it off. And up the middle is Fletcher. And he's going to pick up the first down. Goal to go here for the Hurricanes. They check in at Chris Johnson Jr. now. And he's going to find the end zone. Touchdown, Hurricanes. They get on the board first seven to nothing. That's the Gamecock offense now playing from behind again, just like last week. They'll start off play fake here. Their second drive. Dump it off short for McReynolds, and he's swung down. Nice tackle by Jaden Harris, the senior safety. After a one-yard pickup, second and nine. Hurricanes bring the blitz, and it almost gets home. Reno hit as he throws. Incomplete. Now third and nine. They go with a draw play to McReynolds, and it doesn't fool anybody. He's brought down. That's going to be the end of the first quarter. It's been all defense here in the early going, particularly Miami's defense. You can see only 10 yards of offense for the Gamecocks so far today. Meanwhile, the USC defense has been playing particularly well. Gamecocks have the football, though, third and seven to begin the second quarter as Reno steps up, fires for Caldwell, who can't bring it in. Another stop there for the Hurricanes, who have gotten good field position all day today. Montez, not the strongest punter, and it's showing today. But our defense has been playing very well since that first drive. They give up a one-yard pickup on first down. Now second and nine, slings it across the middle. This one's caught. Here's Dante Little, who gets a big gain. 64 yards passing now for Jasmine, who hands it off to Fletcher on the next play, but he's brought down for a loss of three. Senior linebacker Nate Johnson with a TFL. Third and eight now for the Miami offense. Jasmine to throw, four-man rush, covered up downfield, tries to escape, he does, and he's going to pick up the first down with his legs, takes the contact. Goal to go here for the Hurricanes as Jasmine, a dual-threat quarterback. Now play fake, wants to throw for it. Looks for running lane, takes it, and he's going to find the end zone. Touchdown, Hurricanes. How about the sophomore, Jose Jasmine? If you remember two seasons ago, Hurricanes had the number one recruiting class in college football, and Jose Jasmine was a key part of that. So another drive for the Gamecocks, and they're going to start off backwards again. Armando Blunt blows up another one. Then after an incompletion, a third and 12, Reno airmails a receiver. 
Game Dog offense has been non-existent today. They just didn't show up. First and 10, a pitch for Bird as this one's going to be a first down. Miami has 10 first downs. Gamecocks have none so far today. We're 20 minutes into this game as there's a five-yard carry. Our defense has played good, but if you keep them on the field like this, they're going to get tired. They're going to wear out. There's a nice stop by Caden Curry, the Ohio State transfer. Now third and five. Johnson up the middle. He's stuffed, so Miami will kick three. And they actually missed the field goal. So it's 14 to nothing still. We catch a break. But we're not going anywhere. One yard gain on first down. Second eye trying to screen to get the ball in the hands of Harbor. It's all wrapped up. So now it's third and eight. Reno steps up and he's going to be sacked. The offense has been a disaster today. Again, we give it back to Miami. Again, they have good field position. But they're just not capitalizing. They pick up four on first down. Second and six, bring the tight end across the formation. They hand it off here for Fletcher, and he gets maybe one. Big third and four. They go with a draw, and again is wrapped up, and again Miami gets nothing. They punt it away to South Carolina, who now have three minutes to go, and here's a run outside, and we don't even get the block. Gain of one for McReynolds, eight for 14 today. Second and nine now. Reno to throw, four-man rush, looking for a tight end screen, and it's wrapped up. Questionable play calling as well. We're just... Relying too much on these tight end routes. I don't know why Dow Loggins has called these plays today. Third and 12, Reno sends everybody downfield, tries to buy time, but it runs out. Sacked by Josh Horton and company. Another punt, and Miami with good field position at the two-minute warning. Trying to extend their lead. They also get the ball in the second half to begin. First and 10, dump it off short for Fletcher. Stiff arms a defender, and he gets eight. Also gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Here's Johnson checks in. Second and two. Jasmine tries to evade the rush, and he gets away from Curry, but he can't get away from the second man. That's Shamik Jones who brings him down. Another transfer on the defensive line. Third and eight. Jasmine, he's going to be hit down. Curry gets there. So does Smilton, and they punt it away. South Carolina with a two-minute drill here on one minute actually to go, and there's a strike. That's a 20-yard pickup to Elik Aomenor. Before that play, we had one yard of offense. Just been that kind of half. But unfortunately, or fortunately for us, the two-minute drill has bred new life into this offense. It's now second and five, right as I say that. Reno's hit from behind. Cam Pringles really struggled that left tackle spot. Third and five, relying on the tight end again, but this time Paquette delivers as he picks up a first down, and Gamecocks now go hurry up. They want some points here before the intermission. Play fake on first 10 and 10. Dante Reno just checks it short for Braylon McReynolds, who can't spin out the defender. Gamecocks use second timeout. Next play, Reno steps up, dumps it short for McReynolds, and he's going to outrun the defense, and he gets out of bounds, stops the clock, and at least puts us in field goal territory. Want more than a field goal, though. Reno dumps it off short, but he actually gets deflected. Good defense with the pass breakup. Second and 10, A.O. Maynard on the outside is tackled in bounds, though, after a gain of six. So they'll hurry to the line, not using their final timeout. Third and four, 10 seconds to go here. Reno gets hit as he throws, and that's going to be incomplete. So they'll settle for 36-yard field goal try to try to put some points on the board before the half. And they will do just that. But Miami with a 17-3 lead going to the half. Defenses have reigned supreme, particularly Miami. So their offense really needs to show up here in the second half. Will they? We'll have to find out right after this break. Hurricanes also start off with the football here in the second half as they lead 17-3, to starting off with that mid-screen again. But this time, Gamecocks a little bit more ready for it, tracking down after a gain of two. Second and eight now in the gun as they go handoff left side for Mark Fletcher, who will be wrapped up in the backfield. Good start for the defense. Make it now third and ten. It was Jerron Willis on the tackle for a loss. Going empty man across the formation to the right. It's a pump fake looking up the seam and is knocked down by Cam Robinson. Good three and out force by the defense. We'll just see if the offense can get something going here and well right as they say that. First play from scrimmage is an interception. Reno gets picked off by Ron. So Stafford will get the ball right back for the Hurricanes. Now first and ten from the 37 of the Gamecocks. So it'll be a quick screen outside. Got numbers to the Hurricanes. As Miami with a tight end. Bubble screen gets some six. Going back to the air. Looking short left side. Wide open. Short is Josiah Trader in the impact receiver. Moves the chains. To the 21 we go now. Jasmine. Bubble screen outside. This time for Horton on the right side. And he's tracked down after a gain of two. Good rally for the defense. Now second and eight. As Jasmine moves out. Just dumps it away out of bounds. 
Lives to fight another day, but a big third and eight. Trying to force a field goal as the Gamecocks defense will do just that. That one throwed short. Set up a 33-yard try from the right hash. And this one is up and good. So the Hurricanes add three. And it's now a three-score lead. 22-3, your score is Reno back on the field. This time they go the same play, just on the left side. But this time it's caught by Harbor. Second and 10. Actually, it was incomplete. They said Harbor dropped it. So now third and nine instead of a first down. Really can't afford to go three and out here as they bring a man in motion. Reno scrolls to his right, trying to keep his eyes downfield. He's going to take a deep shot, and this one's easily intercepted. Picked off for the second drive in a row, this time by Pruitt. And Miami just continuing to show dominance here in the second half. Now past midfield, now misdirection for Fletcher, who breaks the tackle, and he's got space. Defense seems like they're getting a little bit tired here as they've been on the field for the majority of the day is now next play. Bubble screen right side. Easy numbers on the outside for Horton, and he's inside the five. Goal to go down here for the Hurricanes. Seven for 60 for Isaiah Horton. First play from the goal to go. Jasmine Russo is left, and he finds his man open in the end zone. Dante Little. That's a big-time play there to move to your left. Keep your eyes downfield. And the Hurricanes with a commanding lead going to the fourth quarter. 27-3 to as the Gamecocks have just... Decided to not show up today, particularly on offense. As first two drives of the half have ended up in INTs, but at least here you're inside the red zone to begin the fourth quarter, and this one's almost intercepted right through the hands of Eric Borregas. Second and ten, looking to the corner. This time it's a touchdown. Elik Aomainer with his second touchdown of the season. So good job by Reno to find the open man there. Still a lot of work to do, but it's now 27-9, to and we're going to go for the two-point try, trying to make it a two-score game. Reno gets a command from the sideline. Looks short, and he's got his man for the two-point try, McReynolds. So at least it's a 16-point game, 27-11. to 11, But you need to stop here. First and 10, that went incomplete. That'll help. Back to the air goes Jasmine. Looks left side. This one's caught on the slant. Shorts by one. Can we get off the field on a three and out? And we will. Good job by Willis to get in the backfield again for another TFL. And that forces a punt. So the Gamecocks still in this one. But on first and 10, Reno, not quite the same mobility we've seen in years past. That's a loss of three on the read option. Josh Horton, the man who brought him down. Now third and four, bringing A.O. Maynard closer to the formation. Trying to set up a screen, but Reno just can't get rid of the football. It was there. You just got to throw it. So the Gamecocks go three and out. Give it back to Miami as we're inside 10 minutes. And here's a big play. Getting outside is Horton inside the 15. Miami trying to put the stamp on this ball game. Is now at the 13. Play fake. Jasmine rolls to his right, and he's going to be sacked. Runs right into the arms of Caden Curry, the Ohio State transfer. Now third and two. Fletcher motioned out to the right. They throw it for the end zone, though, and find Little. For the second time this half, touchdown for Dante Little. Hurricanes re-extend their lead now, 34-11. to As this one's starting to get away from the Gamecocks. First and 10. You got two guys in the same scenario, in the same position. Now second and ten. Reno sacked immediately right up the middle. That's going to be a loss of seven for Manuel Gonzalez on the sack. And now you got third and 17. Gamecocks go play fake, but everybody's in the backfield for the Hurricanes as the resolving door of an offensive line continues. And this one's all but over as we'll speed up the process here as the next drive for the Hurricanes gets deep into Gamecock territory. After the six-yard swing routes, looking for the end zone and gets burned as Floyd. Touchdown, Hurricanes. That one to Isaiah Horton, who had three last year, 10 as a sophomore. Gets his first as a senior. Now 41 to 11. Reno driving, and he will connect with A.O. Maynard again for a touchdown late. But it won't help the end result. The Hurricanes dominate the game. Cox here at Williams Bryce. An ugly game for South Carolina. Final score 41 to 18. Don't let the final score fool you. We don't deserve to have 18 points. We looked abysmal today on both sides of the football. Offense just didn't click until it was garbage time and the defense. They started off well, but I think they just got tired. Sloppy tackling, sloppy angles. Hurricanes just look like the dominant team today. A bad loss for South Carolina. We're looking to do things this year, and it just looks like the issue, the biggest question mark, is still a question mark. The quarterback position has just not played up to the level we've seen of seasons past. Dante Reno will still be the starter going to the third game. We hear from Coach Rom, not looking to make a change, 
but he's got to play better or else we might be looking at a quarterback change. We get some good news, I guess. Caden Curry gets player of the week again. Three TFLs, two tackles, and a sack. So for the second straight week, we have an SEC defensive player of the week. Top stories, though. More upsets. Temple knocks off Penn State. The Nittany Lions lose to their in-state rival in the Owls. That is a big win for Temple. Penn State continues to Penn State. Colorado pulls off a stunner over Kentucky. I do think Kentucky's not as good as they were last year. And then West Virginia knocks off NC State. So week two has been the week of upsets. The Mountaineers over the Wolfpack. And then this week we see Cal take on Florida in a top 25 clash. Here are your scores from week two. Utah State upsets Baylor on the road, 41 to 38. Big win for the Aggies. Purdue gets the win over Wake Forest to move up to 14th. Syracuse survives against Penn State by a point. Well, Pittsburgh, excuse me. Indiana puts up 50 against Ball State. We see Virginia Tech over Old Dominion. The Hokies now in the top 10. Michigan State ekes out Eastern Michigan by a point. Texas State a week after beating Texas. They lose at home to UTSA 17-16 in the I-35 showdown. Rutgers starts off 2-0. They knock off Boston College. Ole Miss over Charlotte on the road. Alabama gets it done by 8 over South Florida. Minnesota starts off 2-0 this year with a win over Mississippi State. We saw Temple upset Penn State at home. FIU loses to Buffalo to get their first win of the season. TCU over Arkansas State, 28-7. Georgia swamps Western Kentucky. That's two straight blowout wins for the Bulldogs. North Texas over UNLV. Auburn drops one at home to Southern Miss, so the Tigers continue to just not be able to find any consistency. Colorado knocked off Kentucky by three. New Mexico over San Diego State. Tennessee dropped the home game against North Carolina. The ball is now 1-2. It dropped out of the rankings. Maryland over UConn. And then we see Stanford get a win on the road in the ACC against Louisville. Marshall knocks off Middle Tennessee State. And then South Alabama goes to Tulane. It wins 41-27. UCLA starts off 0-2. They lose at home to Wisconsin in the Big Ten. And then we see Georgia Tech get a road win over Central Michigan. Illinois, the close one over Duke, 27-24. Akron knocks off UMass to begin their MAC play. Iowa drops the Cyhawk Trophy to Iowa State at home, 37-7. Big loss for the Hawkeyes. Washington over Nebraska. We saw West Virginia knock off NC State. Conroe State loses at home to Florida State, 38-34. UAB gets a bounce back. Well, they actually win over Louisiana Monroe, not a bounce back. Last State drops the game of the week at home to Oregon. Buckeyes no longer ranked. I don't remember the last time I've seen that. With the national championship from two years ago, this time goes to the Ducks. Virginia over Air Force. We saw us lose to Miami. Texas knocks off Georgia State. They get back on the right path. We see UTEP get their win. We see Miami University get their win. East Carolina ekes out Appalachian State. Clemson over Georgia Southern as they get their first win of the season. Hawaii 3-0 as they knock off New Mexico State. Boise State gets their first win over Memphis. Louisiana on the road beats Boiling Green. And then in the rivalry of the border, Kansas over Missouri by a touchdown. Kansas State will then knock off Washington State. And then Texas A&M in a close one beats Arizona State. Arkansas over Utah as the Utes drop one at home. That's kind of an upset, I would say. Cincinnati gets it done on the road against Western Michigan. Michigan, the number two team now over Oklahoma. And then finally, Oregon State over Texas Tech, 38-35. Here are your players of the week. Kenyon Neal to the Wisconsin Badgers had three sacks and a forced fumble and two fumble recoveries against UCLA. Jake Selix, big game, eight for 168 and four scores as a receiver, which means we both know the SEC players as it was Selick and Curry. Here are your rankings in the top 25. Not much change at the top except for Ohio State getting dropped down. We saw Penn State lose at home to Temple actually on the road in Kentucky as well. So some movement in C State as everybody else looks to move up. And there's some new teams joining the ranks, including Miami, who just got the big win over us. Here are your big games next week. Cal and Florida, we saw that one. UTSA will go to Texas, which is interesting because Texas is one loss as the Texas State. And UTSA just beat Texas State, so... The math is math, and the Roadrunners should win that game. Just kidding. UAB on the road against Louisiana. The Maryland hosts Virginia Tech at home against former ACC rivals. And next week, we'll have our FCS game. That's against Towson, so I'll do what I usually do, show the highlights of that one. But hopefully, we can get this quarterback position solved, and hopefully a game against Towson will help that out. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I know it was a blowout loss, but hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. 
you did, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more Dynasty content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.